I was 48 when I met the seer. It was after I had been lying in bed for three years with an illness that nobody could diagnose. So through a good friend of mine, I was connected to this miracle man who was supposed to help people like me. And I phoned him up and uh, on the telephone, he just said, uh, ask me what was wrong with me. And uh, I told him and uh, he said, okay, you, we will see each other in half a year. And until then, everything would be all right. And then he hang, hung up and um, I was a little bit bewildered because I thought, okay, everything would be all right. So a little while after, I felt a faint knocking in the back of my head on a, on a spot that I later learned was uh, called medulla umblangata, a portal, but I'll come back to that. Um, half an hour later, I went to bed. I was so tired and I, I slept deeply, deeply and we woke up an hour and one and a half later and my whole world was, was changed. It was like coming from a world in black and white to a world in technicolor, if you can imagine that. I was totally cured for an illness that had uh, uh, kept me in bed for three years. So half a year later, I went f by his invitation to the holy mountain of Montagur, the picture you can see here behind me, and met the seer and uh, started to work with him there. Starting working with him, you should imagine, was like he was a former military man. So he was very disciplined. And, you know, in my world, having read for 30 years all about spirituality, I never really thought about a military man in, in, in spiritual, uh, connected to spirituality. But there he was, as you can see here, standing in the front of the very same mountain, me sitting there. And um, from that moment on, um, my path opened, you know, everything that I have read for 30 years just evaporated up in the air because I understood that I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. Here was a man who was not religious, he had not read anything, but he was everything that I had read about. So we started to work, meaning that he asked me to follow him. And on my back, I had a rucksack full of stones that he had uh, found and put in it. And every stone uh, kind of um, represented a shadow or something in my life that I had to, to face. And uh, we carried it, I carried it up on the top of the mountain and we threw it out. And, and he forced me to really say thank you from the bottom of my heart for every stone that was thrown up. Now you don't need this anymore, he said. Now give thanks to it, show your gratitude for what it meant to you and just goodbye. There was, for example, my, my um, relationship to women, my relationships to my parents and so forth. I mean, there was all those kind of things that I think all people are dealing with through life, but that we have certain areas that we, in hindsight, can see, hmm, I did not manage that very well. So I was forced to see it, but also to learn that this was um, the very spiritual tools that we are given for free when we come into this incarnation, everyday life. And this man, he was really, an everyday man in that respect that he was very practical. I mean, he was not a man of many words and not many lofty words. He was really, he was walking the talk, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I started, um, a few months later, I started to work with him. He was living at that time uh, in Andalusia, in a, a town called Fuyandirola. And uh, I was invited there after we had spent some time in Montague, where we had been working very, very thoroughly, very, very military, going up and down this mountain with those stones every day, day in and day out. So I was totally wasted in one, in one sense of the word, but also very energized, you know, because I've, 
I was getting rid of so much thing, so many things that I've been carrying without knowing it really. So when he invited me to Spain, the real work started. Every morning he got up um, just half past six and he was just standing up and he was pronouncing, I hereby dedicate myself to the universe or I hereby dedicate my me to what maybe you and I would call God. And he was saying in a, in a loud voice, and in the beginning I did not understand why he could just sit down and say it. After that, he went into his office and sat for one hour in silence. As he said later, we are not meditating, we are just sitting, letting the dust fall to the ground. He, he just, he did not want to achieve something, you know, like, Often when you go into meditation, you want to achieve something, peace of mind or uh, nirvana or you're, you're searching for enlightenment. But this man, he, he knew that we human beings are already enlightened. Mm -hmm. So just connecting. And eight o'clock, the phone started to, to ring. And it was people from all over the world that like me half a year before that, a year before that, have helped, uh, wanted his help. So they could phone from Australia, United States or America or whenever, wherever. And they would come with all kinds of problems. For example, one would say, please, I have been given three months to live. I have cancer, can you help me? And he would say, yes, of course. And in the beginning, I really, really, I was really wondering how, what it takes for you, for somebody to say, yes, of course, to a person who had been given three months to live. But I later, when I really started to, to work with him and becoming his uh, apprentice or, or pupil, um, found out what that was all about. But it was not by him telling me, so to speak, it was just by showing. And I had to, f I found out that this man, he really, did not have words for what he was doing, that that was my job. And uh, as the days went by and the months went by and years went by, he started to open up about his and my connection in former lifetimes. And that was why he wanted me to come down and wanted me to, to know more about this relationship we had together. Also in order, because he knew that I was a writer and in my work, I needed the next step, you know, to really not only, you could say, fantasize about things or, or be inspired by things, but really experience things, you know. And that was one of the, the main thing about him, he, that he said, you cannot learn to ride a bike uh, without hopping up on the bike. You cannot read about how you learn to ride a bike. So that was what he was doing. He was actually showing me how to ride the bike by doing it, you know. So it was always follow me kind of things. Don't say anything, just follow me and watch and learn, you know. So like me, when he, I was, when he healed me and got me out of bed, this knocking on, on, on the, in the neck, this tapping, it was to that portal that we called medulla oblongata. But in the etherical sense of that spot, you know, a portal that connects us to the etherical element around us. And that was what he was doing. He was transporting his own etherical body to that person's etherical body who needed help. It didn't matter where that person was situated. He would go there and he would fix the problem by laying his hand or do the knocking, you know, tapping. And I think it was a kind of wake up call, you could say, to activate that healing that we are all carrying within. And I think this is the most important thing uh, that I wanted to communicate to people after working with him for nine years is that we human beings are able to do so much more than we think. And um, that we are, everything that we are looking for and searching for outside of ourselves is really here. And you know, I, you know, me being having 
um, studying all these for 30 years before I met the seer about Yeshua, Jesus, the work he was doing, very much into that and very much inspired by it. This man who knew nothing about Jesus or Yeshua was actually doing. So you see, for me, it was an eye opener on more than one level. You don't have to be religious. You just need to open up to that kingdom of heaven that Yeshua is talking about, that we are all carrying within. And that was what this man was doing without knowing about it in any other way than in the universal sense of that thing that is in all kind of religions. I actually like the, the, the quote of Gandhi that says, God knows no religion. You see, because there's nothing wrong with any religion. It is what we human beings have done with it that is that's where something is wrong, that we have totally misunderstand, that we are not supposed to park our all our powers in some fancy figure, religious figure, and just close our eyes and blindly follow anybody who's representing that figure, archetypal figure. As Yeshua was saying, follow my example and you can do even greater wonders than that. The seer said exactly the same thing. I don't understand why people are not doing what I'm doing because it's in our, in our, within our reach because we are already that. So we can do this. So I remember you were saying that uh, he sometimes gave people an option. The option he gave was when he, 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 he picked up that there was something in this person's life that was missing or that that person were not understanding rightly so he would just correct that so telling uh, that person listen you need to be have focus on this matter for the next few months in order to understand how it works for you because that's the the the, the problem you why you're being sick because he knew that before any physical illness arrived. There have been many, um, um, there have been, you know, the etherical, um, what we call the book of life that is actually um, all the energy that human beings since the dawn of time have projected is actually recorded in what we call the Akashic records or the book of life. And that we should understand that everything that we have projected into this record or this file of records is mirrored back to us somehow. Everything that we send out returns to us. So if we are experiencing physical illness, for example, this thing that is coming back to us have tried to reach us through different realms before it hits the physical realm. For example, in dreams at night. And if you have some dreams and you wake up, you don't know, you don't know what they mean, then there's no understanding of how you could find a solution for the problem. And it will, in the end, it will, maybe it can become a physical illness in order to wake us up, so to speak. So he would catch up on that and say, that's why you are, you are in this situation that you find yourself in now, is that you need to have focus on that particular thing. But at the end of the day, he, said, he also said, if you think, he said to me, that there will be any more advanced techniques than the very basic rules of this work, you need to reconsider because there won't be. And the problem about the basic rules is that they, you must muster so much, um, what do you call it, um, discipline. You need to be there, not just once in a while, but every day. The way we conduct ourselves, for example, it is how we approach things. It is, for example, if you want to, to, to take part in charity, and at the same time want to be famous of being this charity person. It, it's contradictory. We should understand that all the faculties that we have, spiritual faculties, sh should be 
expressed as natural as we do anything else. We are not going around and saying, hey, I ate two pieces of bread today. Look at me, how great I am, you know? And that's exactly what it is, you know? It should be as natural that when somebody's in need, you just provide the help that is needed. If you have no money, you can, there's other way too. Just your attention, just recognizing the other person, you know, whatever that is, you know. To be attentive, to be present, that is the basic rules, you know. And most of us, and that, it goes for myself too, very often are just skating on the surface of everything, you know, going from A to B, not seeing anything. So it is to be awake and to, to look other beings in the eye and recognize them and say, I can see you. I know who you are. I know how amazing you are and how beautiful you are. So the basic rules are something everybody can start to practice in the supermarket, doesn't matter where. And you know, you can actually if you think you have to go to a certain holy place in order to experience this open, forget about it. The holy place is where you are. You are carrying it wherever you go. In the supermarket, you can have apparitions of the most amazing uh, character. So this was all what the seer he did, you know. And he was doing it day in and day out, helping thousands of people in that. Every night he, he sat on his bed, going through everything he had done through the day and trying to see if there was something he could do better or something that needed to be adjusted, as he said. Sometimes he would, he would fast for a week, sometimes two weeks. Sometimes he would eat meat, but most of the time he was a vegetarian. Sometimes he would have a drink maybe also smoke a cigarette, but he would always try to adjust himself to what was needed, he felt was needed. And I found out later that the fasting was very often when there was a very thorough healing that he needed to do, you know. And I thought that in, for example, in the New Testament of Jeshua, that was exactly the same thing. He was, he was telling his disciples, you sometimes need to fast for some time and pray in order or, or connect because prayer is connecting to that thing within you that open up the, the faculties that you are carrying. So um, he was also helping the dying people. Uh, relatives would call him and said, my husband died the other day. Will you please help him on the uh, over to the other side? And Kelly would always say, of course. And uh, what is his name? And he would uh, do that and after three days he would phone back to this lady and said yes I have these uh, informations about your husband just to be sure that it's the same person that we talk about and he would give that uh, the, the wife of that uh, man a full description of the deceased character on all levels and she would say yes that's him thank you he said then I know that it's the same uh, so we are talking about and I can tell you that he is over well and he's taken care of on the other side stuff like that I mean there's so many stories I could tell you about what he did and how he worked but it was always through the etheric the etheric realm that he would the ether also to, mm -hmm. he had that uh, also as a child uh, you know I think we all have some access to that realm when we are children. I had especially, I, I know that because that no doubt about it. And I think most children have it, but we are not allowed to to kind of celebrate that or, 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 or follow that path. But he were at that time, he just did not know what to, to make of it. So after the military period, he came in connection with, um, he came, he was connected to high practitioners in Germany and he went for that uh, education and became a very, very skilled um, homopath. And, and slowly he started to, to uh, develop the faculties once again, now in a more mature way. You know, one thing is to know, to, to, not, to, to, to be connected to the theater. 
Another thing is that the moment that you know how things work, you can be very direct in the way of communication. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then comes his discipline that, you know, I find that many, many so-called spiritual people today, they, they can stick to a practice for some time and then they lose, cont they lose interest somehow because they want to have experiences of, of apparitions and of what, what, it, what it might be. But, you know, if I hadn't met Kelly and started to write about him in my book, The Seer and the Old Manuscript, nobody would have known about him or, or, except those who have been, been treated by him, of course. But I've, there's no doubt in my mind that there was a reason for me to go and do that. That was part of our relationship. Um, and it was certainly part of my path, you know to um, yeah to share that uh, experience with with people who who are serious about what they want to do in this in this lifetime we we are we find ourselves in times of trouble right now there are so many problems everywhere and it seems to me that we we keep on going in circles and circles and even if we, we find new words for the same things that we are doing, it is the same things we are doing. So nothing really happens before we find out that we need to connect to our higher self, you know, or what we call God. My practice is very simple. It's, it's working with the breath and being, having studied the Aramaic for many, many years, I use some of the Aramaic words of Jeshua inhaling Holy Spirit, exhaling Kingdom of Heaven. In Aramaic, Ukhara Kutsha, Malkutsha Deshamaya. Ukhara Kutsha, Malkutsha Deshamaya. Holy Spirit, Kingdom of Heaven. Knowing that every time I inhale from all sides into the heart, from all sides from the back, into my etherical heart, Holy Spirit, and in Aramaic, Ugur Kutcha. Knowing that this is the activator, the very thing that Yeshua was telling us that is the activator, the one we should work through. Manifesting the kingdom or queendom of heaven everywhere around us. In that way, always, this is what connects me. That's the only thing I can say. And, and uh, so that's my very simple practice that I can do for a whole day, you know, or in, and as I said, in the supermarket. So this is my basic work, you know, and I know that it won't get any more advanced than that to me, because to stick to it for a whole day is very advanced. So um, you just have to take my word for it. If you haven't tried it, go and try it and be a military man about it because it takes it takes a lot of um, dedication and that's another thing you should always what is also part of this uh, basic uh, the basic rules is one thing is what you are telling everybody uh, out there you can move fancy you can use fancy words lofty words about this and that love and compassion but what are you doing when you are on your own and nobody's watching you you know that's real it what why are you doing what you are doing and another thing whatever you do whatever miracle you think you are part of don't make a fuss about it because miracles are are should be in what we call miracles should be a natural thing you know and you when you start to understand how things works and see how easy you can connect to other people and actually ease their pain sometimes also heal them from their illness what more do you want so if not now when if not us who